hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Dirt to Dust presented by Outlaw Offroad. I'm your host, Doug Langford, alongside the pretend off-roader, Mr. Caleb Forbes. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to give yourself a name today because I changed mine. Because last week I couldn't really come up with one really good. I was like, man, I don't really know. Like last one, the last one, like two episodes ago was really good. And then you had a good one. So I had to come up with one today. So we've got we've got the closet duck lover here <laughs> with the host pretend <laughs> off roader. I love it. Um, which love I know it's it. supposed to be a joke, but at this point, with as long as your LJ's been going, you might actually be called a pretend off roader. I'm I'm getting pretty close to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to oh. rename everything when that thing comes out of the shop. You really but yeah, uh, welcome back. Drive, this is a uh, drive all that. Yeah, uh, phew, it's gonna be it's gonna be a challenge. Um, yeah, welcome back. Uh, it's a non hurricane day, um, so there should be no reason that I lose power this time. <laughs> man, I don't need uh, the yeah. trifecta, man. Two weeks ago, no. we had the big spectrum hack that I lo- that lost me. Last week, we had the remnants of Hurricane Debbie that got you. Um, yeah, so let's. I got the sun is shining. Here yeah. in Greensboro, North Carolina, it's nice and warm outside today. Got outside, had a little lunch today, a little, little chicken tendy lunch today. It was pretty delicious. Got to eat it out in the sunshine. Well, let's look at my skin. I ate it in the shade. <laughs> but there was sunshine <laughs> on the thing that was shading me. So let's just be honest. And then I got some delicious coffee. We talked about this a little bit. Bourbon barrel aged coffee, Caleb. Mm. From, uh, mm, from Burnt Church Distillery. In Hilton Head, yeah, South Carolina, went down there a couple of weeks one of ago. My it's pretty delicious stuff. to go to. It's um. um did you go? You went inside bourbon. and oh, dude, yeah. Well, yeah. we found it, and then we went to eat there, and the food wasn't great. I'm not gonna lie. The food they do have a food. They have, they have the kitchen, but I think they try too hard with the food a little mm-hmm. bit. The food wasn't amazing. Um, but while we were in there, they had these big TVs up with all the stuff that they do. They do distillery tours. They do like mixology classes and all this. Mm-hmm. And the very next day they had a tour and we were just, we were down there trying to chill in for a few days. I was like, let's do the tour. So we did and got to learn all about their process and all that. And on the, all the different spirits that they make and then hit the gift store and bought a bunch of stuff. Cause it's a distillery. And I think those things are cool. So yeah, no, it's awesome. Uh, only time, I actually looked at having our wedding there. Um, and then until we saw the, the price, distillery? yeah, uh, we saw the price it, the upper uh, yeah. upper twenty thousand dollars to rent the place, and I was like, mm, it's yeah, a very not. nice place. <laughs> <laughs> the only distillery nice. I've been to a lot of distilleries, a lot of breweries. The only time I've ever liked, tried, liked, and bought bourbon cream hmm. wasn't okay. a thing, but it is now. It's pretty delicious. It's uh, it's yeah. not in this particular cup of coffee, but <laughs> not until Friday. Another <laughs> cups of coffee. Mm. Mm. I didn't say we were going to wait till Friday, but uh, we do, everyone, we have a great episode for you guys today. Can't wait to get into it. We're going to talk a little bit of off-road myth busters. We got a little section we're calling real versus fake. We've got a top three, Caleb and Doug's top threes coming up. And then we do have the mailbag with some awesome questions. So let's get right into the show. Without further ado, let's jump right on in. When other people see dirt, you see glory and when you see a vehicle for the first time your first thought is not how pretty it is but how much abuse can it take this is dirt to dust presented by outlaw off-road if it's anything off-road and dirty we probably like it and we're probably talking about it you'll get industry info tech talk and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry let's do it this is dirt to dust and now your hosts doug langford and caleb forbes all right and we are back and ready to get this episode going as i said just before the intro break we are going to kick this off with our segment We are going to call Off-Road Myth Busters, created by the pretend off-roader himself, Mr. Caleb Forbes. Caleb, (laughs) tell me what what we're doing here with the myth busting. Well, um, no, we are are going to do exactly that. Uh, It's one of my favorite shows as a kid. Uh, I I could watch Myth Busters for hours. Um, Okay, stop. Hold on. Stop. (laughs) Don't talk like that when I was a kid. Dude, I was a full-grown man. 
You, you realize Mythbusters has been off the Stop. air for almost 10 years Stop now, it. right? Stop it. Yeah. Stop. So, therefore, I with when you. I was I a kid. I can't with you. Please, just, just go on. <laughs> just go. I can't. Anyways. I uh, no, there's been, there have been multiple posts on multiple Facebook groups that I've seen that's had some kind of bad advice. Um, I don't know what Not it is. Few, maybe huh? the summer heat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just a few. Uh, yeah. Maybe the summer heat. Maybe something. Maybe a couple of YouTube videos have been distributed now that are, are giving um, not so great advice. So uh, yeah. I would like for us to give the correct advice on here. Let's do um, so let's that. jump right into this. Uh, myth okay. number one. And this is one that I've heard for a very long time. Um, a manual transmission is better than an automatic. And you're not a real wheeler <laughs> unless you wheel a manual. Well, you know, the only people that ever say that are the guys who have manuals. Oh, 100%. Absolutely. My response is always one of two. Number one is I look them dead in the face and go, tell me you can't afford an automatic transmission without telling me <laughs> you can't afford an automatic transmission. And then the other one is, quite simply, you can't outshift a computer. Um, no. No, man. A manual's, a manual's great, I mean, for doing certain things, but I cannot tell you as a spotter, as a group leader, as a quote-unquote trail bruh, um, I, I treat people differently when they're in a manual, especially if they're not already really good. Now, if you're really, really good, then you're really good in spite of your transmission, not because of your manual transmission. Like, right. I know guys that can drive, and I go wheeling with them, and I don't have to tell them anything special, but they know how to drive their manual. But by and large, most of them, those are the guys that are going to get on an incline. They're going to stall it out. They're going to try and put it in first instead of second. They're going to they're gonna do things and... It's just one more thing to think about, especially off road. Um, so no, I don't. I don't think. I mean, yeah, okay, it's simpler, but believe me when I tell you, an automatic transmission is actually easier to rebuild than a manual. Um, automatic is uh, easier to work on with with new new manual transmissions for sure. Yeah, um, for sure. And, and not not pointing fingers at anyone in particular, but you you're never going to catch me uh, smelling like burnt clutch uh, throughout the trail day. And right. um, yeah. Um, Sorry to say it, but no, you're right. Um, you can't outshift an automatic transmission. And honestly, um, the way some of the, especially the JL at speed, I know we talk about JLs a lot on the show, but that's, I think what we have the most experience with. Um, it's and that JL on, speed, on the road. Yeah. yeah. And first and second gear are, are so freaking perfect, especially in four low. Um, it's kind of hard to beat that. Um, now I'm sure there are some really talented wheelers that that wheel only manual and have for the last oh, thirty for sure. years. Yeah, um, yeah, of course. And I'm sure there are, there are some tips and tricks probably with a JL as well that make manual wheeling a little bit easier. Um, but overall, um, I see a vast majority more of people stalling out, rolling backwards, accidentally hitting the clutch instead of brake when they're trying to two pedal foot like we've talked about on this show. Um, unfortunately, you know we don't have three legs, so. It's hard to cover all three at the same time. And sometimes you just kind of panic kick and uh, you hit the wrong pedal. So I'm going to call this one beep. myth. Beep. Yeah. <laughs> We've it's heard of thing. whiskey throttle. Uh, the so flex some people beep is a clutch. thing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think the only one, people saying manual is better are the people that have them. And they're yeah. just like, it's a purist thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a guy on TikTok. I don't remember his name. I have to find it that does like spoofs of every guy that goes to Nantucket or every guy that, you know, <laughs> goes to this college or every Jeep owner. And he does all these things and, you know, it's freaking hilarious, but it's funny because it's true. So yeah, I think the right. only guy saying manual's the best is the, like that purist that you're talking about this and driving it for 30 years, but from an actual technology standpoint and a drivability standpoint, no, it's not stop. Nah, I agree. It's not um, um, myth and, one and plus and plus I'm just going to throw this out there. Two extra gears in the highway, bro. Like, come on. It's a game changer. That's why I have. That's one of the reasons I went to the newer trucks is because my truck has a 10 speed transmission. And one of the mm -hmm. reasons I will not, I have not purchased. I have owned the Ford Super Duty with the 10 speed and I have owned, I do currently own a 2500 with a 10 speed. And the number one reason that I will not buy a Cummins is because there ain't enough gears in that transmission and I tow a lot and it makes yep. a big old difference. So it does. Myth one go, busted. Myth one busted. Myth, one busted. Um, myth number two. You have to have lockers to go off road. I'm myth busted. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. <laughs> no, 
you do not. No, I've, you I've I mean, seen some pretty talented people in, in sports, Sahara's uh, non-locked um, and even with lockers, but lockers turned off. No, you don't have to have lockers to, have to, to have go have off road. It certainly helps, um, especially in the hard stuff. It certainly helps, but no, you do not have to have yep. them. And there's actually really cool tricks with modern vehicles now that you can cover the brakes and play with the emergency brake a little bit and trick mm-hmm. the ABS system into sending power to the wheels that you want. Um, brake line diff, baby. I, I call my, uh, yeah, brake line diff. I call it my, uh, my Phobicon lockers. Uh, you know, fake it till you make it. And you know, if you got to use the ABS system to do that, you use the ABS system to do that. I mean, that is actually the term for it. It's brake lock differential. I mean, that's a thing. So, I mean, yeah, you can absolutely do that. You don't have to do it, but, I mean, they're limited slip, which, you know, say what you will about limited slip and open, but with with the right line, the right spotter, the right driver, whatever, you don't have to have it. Yeah, if you're going to go do insane stuff, yeah, but we're talking about, like, the extreme 10%, the last 10% of idiots out there, myself included in that. Um, but, yeah, you don't have to have them. It's the old people going, oh, lights before lockers, and they're making fun of people that do light bars. I mean, make fun mm-hmm. of the people that do all the light bars. Like, I'm fine with that. Like... Hit the guy that's got fifty thousand dollars in lights on there, but doesn't have lockers. I don't mind that, but he still can go off road. He might look kind of For funny sure. doing it, and he might have way too many ducks on his dash, but he can certainly go off road. Uh, as funny as he may right. be looking, so yeah, I would not say you have to have lockers. It does make things easier in certain circumstances, but I've gone wheeling many trips without a locker. I mean, for the first many months that I had Reaper, there was no locker there. You know, oh, yeah, because Reaper was a Sahara. I forgot Reaper about that. Reaper was a Sahara. Yeah, and I wheeled the crap out of that thing for months. It, was, it wasn't It was until I don't think I had – I don't even think I had a locker in it for the first EJS. I had a front locker in it, which a lot of good that does you in Moab. But I had a front locker in one of those first – when Dynatrack first released the Pro Rock 44. Uh, I think I got one. There was three of them. I got one. Jeremy got one from Rock Crawler, and then Kevin and Brittany at Lightbright had one. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but they had Rubicons Yeah, and I didn't cause that went in stepchild. Now it now stepchild's on like 50 inch tires and 9,000 horsepower and all that. <laughs> but back in the day, you know, that, that, that vehicle started out on rough country. And back then, I think at that point it was on metal cloak. That was before mm-hmm. they went rock crawler. Um, yeah. So we went to Moab like that, but I still had my, it was a, it was a M220 rear, but it wasn't locked. It was mm-hmm. not locked. So I think shortly thereafter I put a Rubicon rear in it. Um, or maybe it was a Rubicon rear, but it was that was the first time I'd had a locker in it. That was over. It was a year after I bought it. Okay, and I wheeled a ton in that year. So yeah, you don't you don't need it. Is it easy? Does it make things easier? Sure. Is it required in some stupidness? Yeah, but you have to have it to act, just go off road and have a good time. Be a weekend warrior. Nah. No. Myth two, busted. No. no. <laughs> Myth two, busted. Now I will busted. say caveat to that. Um, if you if you are not re-geared and you don't have lockers you're going to have a much harder time gears will definitely help some of that torque um which leads me into myth number three uh (laughs) what a good segue here uh myth number three uh you don't need new gears with jl8 speed i have seen this multiple times (laughs) so the myth is you don't need new gears yeah, the myth is you do not have to re-gear That's because the myth. JLA speed I do see has, that one on. Yeah. I see that all the time. And it's usually some idiot going, I've got 35s and it's fine. And I just want to oh, ring his freaking neck, throat punch him, kick him in the knees and be like, you're an idiot. You're yeah, literally I've, an idiot. If you're going to put 37s, yeah. I've done it, guys. I've done mm-hmm. this. I've done, I put 37s on 345 gears in a Sahara. I've done it. I've put 40s on 410s. I've done all of this. There's almost not a combination you can think of that I haven't run for at least some amount of time on on a JL or JT or, or even to an extent of JK that I've run it. I, I mean, I've owned it. Um, TJ, all of them. All of them. And you're not an 8-speed anymore. And, and if you're a mm-hmm. manual, 6-speed's useless because you have no torque. You have no power in 6. Yeah. Anything above a 35. And now that's a 35 is drivable on 410s, but you're still going at it. You're still losing 8th. I mean, yeah. with an eight-speed transmission, you've got to go one deeper than we ever did on the six-speed JK. So, mm-hmm. like, 37s, you know, a good gear for 37s all around was 488 on the JK automatic. Well, now we're at 513. And people are like, well, the, the pinion size is different. No, it's actually not in the Advantech axle. 
And the JK, yes, it was. The pinion change, all that. There's only a difference of one tooth, I think, a contact between 48 and 513. And the pinion shank size is the same. So you're not giving up strength. Traditionally, you would think that by going deeper in the gear. So to go to be running on 345s, 410s, or God forbid 345s on, on something that should be. Because 37s are kind of the thing now on JLJT. That's kind of like the average. Yeah. A lot of people go taller. Agree. A lot of people go 35s. But most, I think 37 is kind of the average. Um, and that's a 513 on an automatic. It just is on the 850RE transmission, which is every automatic except the 392. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's 8HP75. Which is, but even that's an 8-speed, so it's different because it's all the horsepower and the torque. Um, yeah, you, you're... You're losing eighth and sometimes seventh. When I've had the wrong gear ratio, um, I've even sometimes gone down into fourth at highway speed. The yeah. I made a wrong calculation. I'll admit it. This is like one of those where Doug was right, where Doug was wrong. Uh, I love that <laughs> segment on the Colin Coward song. Colin, yeah, Colin Coward does it. And I was wrong when I did 38s on the 4 by e and I geared it to 488. I was wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, I assumed that that torque... Because a lot of 4 by es out there aren't being re-geared. In fact, you couldn't re-gear them for the first 21s and 22s. You couldn't re-gear until there was a, uh, above, a above a 488 until there was a yeah. software thing. And now we know how to do it. But I did the 488 because it was going to be the easiest to do, and I had them sitting on the shelf, and I thought, well, with the torque of the E and all this torque and all that, but you don't always have all of that power. <laughs> you mm-hmm. don't. So 488 was wrong. I should have gone. I absolutely should have gone 513. <laughs> Yeah, and I can only imagine how much it would suck. And I, I can tell the difference that I don't like it on 488. I don't like the 488. I'm not a fan. It's the wrong yeah. ratio. So if I had to drive that around on 410s, um, yeah, it would suck. So if, oh, yeah. if anybody says you're going to put bigger tires and you don't need to re-gear, yeah, they're an idiot. They need to put any wrench they've ever been given down and walk away. It's just wrong. It's just wrong-headed. No, I, it's, I it's, agree. It's they didn't um, do it, or they didn't want to spend the money, or whatever, and they're you know that whole confirmation bias that's you know they're justifying, um, yep. but they're just wrong. Yeah, it's just wrong. You need gears. Maybe you don't do it, and maybe it's tolerable to you, but you still need to do it, and you're still you're still causing long term wear and tear issues. You're still having fuel economy issues. Your transmission's hunting. You're running at higher RPMs in a lower gear. You're not making use of eighth speed. I mean, it's just there's it's no good and all bad. So yeah, you need new gears. <laughs> Yeah, no, I agree. Um, no, that was just one of the things uh, I, I dealt with on my own Jeep. I know I got cut off from the power outage last time I was trying to talk about this. I ran 40s on stock gears, stock axles on the Sport. Don't ever do this. Um, I got sent the wrong tires. Basically, the company was like, look, uh, if you want us to send you a different set of tires, like just you're going to have to ship these back freight. And I was like, I'm not shipping these things back. Wasn't that the Gladiator um, incident? The gladiator that was the gladiator tire incident. Tire yeah. incident. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so I ended up running them with the idea that I was going to put Rubicon axles in. Um, that didn't happen for a while. <laughs> and I ran 345s on 40s. Don't don't ever do that. Did you ever uh, put Ruby yeah, axles absolutely. in that sport? Did you ever do it? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't remember. And then I, I sold it like I sold it less than a month after and I did it was that. Gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was gone. Was <laughs> yeah, well. um, but now, um, looking at um, Brittany's Jeep, my wife's Jeep, she's got the 4 by EJL, and we've talked about it several times. I've got 35s on it with the factory 410s, and there is no way I would put a bigger tire on that setup right now. Like, there's absolutely no way. After feeling what a correctly geared JL should feel like, uh, it, it is absolutely night and day difference. So and honestly, if you were to re-gear it, you should be on four eighty eights at thirty fives. Yeah, no, again, I, I actually agree with it. that because that's seven hundred pounds of battery in that damn thing. I mean, weight matters. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you got rotational, yeah, with the size of the tires and the weight of the tires. Um, but that seven hundred pounds, yes, it's it's mounted low and low and centered, but it's still seven hundred extra pounds. Like you're carrying around three people in the back seat all the time. Absolutely, and gear ratio matters. So you should actually have the four eighty eights. <laughs> on the 35s and I should have at least 513s. I'm I may, I don't know, when I do the new axles, um I may go 538 because again on the JL take all the gear you can get, man. <laughs> take it yeah, all. Absolutely. I mean 40s, absolutely. I mean you need like 589s minimum. 
Uh, which is, you can't get that right in a regular axle. So you're going to have to upgrade the axle mm-hmm. and change that. I think I had 589s or 540-somethings in Reaper. And then um, I would, I, th- I might be 589s. Uh, or five, yeah, 589s. No one say you had five, I'd say you had 543s. Because I remember Maybe. Ryan um, just a couple and weeks I ago. And I wanted deeper. That's right. I wanted yeah. deeper, but I, bought, I had to get, I decided to go with 10-inch gears instead of 9-inch gears. Yeah. And 10-inch are very, they're hard to come by. They're okay. hard to come by. They're stupid expensive. And uh, it was um, Jeremy at Gearworks. We had talked about it, and we went with 543s. Now, Reaper runs great. Um, and even at Highway, I drove Reaper all around Colorado. Mm-hmm. Reaper on 42s <laughs> drove better on that gear ratio than the 4xE drives on 488s. Because I've, I've had them both in Colorado. I've had them both in Colorado. Mm-hmm. I've done the I-70. I've done all the all of that. Reaper on the Fab Tens drove better RPM gear hunting wise, all that um, than the four by E does. Absolutely. So I'm well, going to go deeper on the. I'm going to break a little. Um, I'm going to break a little secret to you. Uh, Reaper is going back on forty twos. That doesn't surprise me. I am shocked. Forty two that he hasn't put it 42 on forty two inch Baja yet. Boss. Yeah, yeah forty two inch Baja Bosses. Uh, after the, his his trip up to here at uh, in Lake Norman, he saw my tire sitting in the garage awaiting going on the LJ. Looked at him a little bit, then has a customer that he's doing a huge build on right now in Atlanta and uh, oh, yeah. also yeah, ordered 42s. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Ryan texted me one day. He said, you guys suck. I hate peer pressure. And I'm like, why? And he sent uh, me a don't, picture. don't, Ryan. <laughs> do not blame peer pressure, bud. You just can't drive. So yeah. you need 42s. That's all I was like, look, it. 42s are the way. You, you can't lose with 42s. I used to say 42s can't lose. And I did the trip on 42s. It just... It made such a difference. Like, I did Ruba Dice on 42s. I did, I think I did American Crawlers on American Crawler, the, that, that movie we filmed. I think I did that mm-hmm. on 42s. It just makes everything so easy. Yeah. It's, you actually lose some of the challenge of, of wheeling a Jeep with those bigger tires. And it's the number one reason I went back to 38s. I could see myself at some point going back to 40s. If I go 538 on those, on the Curries that I'm going to get for the 4 by E. Uh, mm-hmm. I, AKA Elon, um, then I, I could see maybe going forties, but I, it did so good on thirty eights. Yeah. Um, the only reason I would do forties is to maybe get a little bit more net ground clearance. I'm going to see how it does with the new Next Venture Motorsport skids that are coming that are on it now. Yeah, uh, we'll find that out here. We'll we'll find that out at Trail Days at a minimum, probably before that. Yeah. Um, we'll, you know, I'm I'm hoping pending knee surgery, I'm hoping to get back out to Windrock. Next week, right before uh, Jeep Invasion, but I don't know. Depends on what the doc says about driving and jumping yeah. up and down, up and down out of that out of that thing lifted. Um, it's not with conducive a bump with to a, a torn bad meniscus. Knee. Yeah, yeah, I definitely do have a torn meniscus currently. So my surgery is not scheduled until mid September. Yeah, we just got the schedule. Yeah, I just got it scheduled for September the seventeenth. So I'm like, well, mm. so it looks like I'm going to be doing Wheel and Windrock, Jeep Invasion, and Trail Days. With a torn meniscus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you see me out Not there in my, in my, well, I mean, it's okay when I put the brace on it. It's when I wear a knee brace, like I'm wearing one right now. It's fine. I just can't do yeah. weird things with it or the flap that's torn will turn in and like I can't yep. walk for a day. Like I'm yep. done. Like you might as well just give me a pair of crutches because I can't even put a half a pound of weight on it. It's done. So hopefully yeah. that doesn't happen. I'm going to be super careful. So we'll see how that goes. But getting back to the myth, um, yes, you do need gears. Yeah. Be quiet. Myth Everybody number three. Differently. Busted. Busted. Uh, I'm going to lean in real close so that one gets real loud. All right. Uh, myth number four. A quality suspension will do better than bigger tires. Mm. <laughs> I, I, mm-mm, mm-mm. I can't say this is busted or not. Because <laughs> I want to throw a curveball at you. Here's I, why. I, I, I hid this they in the middle for, for a reason. They yeah. both matter. But as I just said, I didn't like 42s because I thought it made it too easy. So I came back down. I came back down to a 38. I didn't come back down to a 35. Now, I am on a 35 on the race car. And let me tell you something. It freaking matters. <laughs> it absolutely matters. Because there is just some stuff, no matter what, you know, horsepower helps, and and forty six ninety nine has a lot of horsepower. But ask any driver in that class that doesn't have plus five hundred, and there's a few of us that have over. I think I think all three of the factory Broncos are running over five hundred now. We're really close to it. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I know I'm running well into the 600s. Um, so unless a side that can rely on just freaking sending it, the number one thing of those guys is, you know, there's stock bypasses for one reason and one reason only, and it's generally tire size. You know, they just like 35s just aren't going to do it. Um, mm-hmm. But I can also tell you from experience that a good suspension matters because I have gone out in different suspensions and felt the difference. The first time I ever rode on one of the, it was one of the pre-production um, long arm kits that Rock Crawler put out, and I put it on Reaper back in 2021, I think, mm-hmm. maybe even 2020. It was 2020, and uh, it was right before they released it to the general public, and it was their new long arm kit. And we ended up going a kit that they did not have, which was coilovers front and rear, uh, which is a kit now. You can actually get coilover front and rear now, but you couldn't back then. Um, and we took it straight to Moab, and we did that first mob Moab later in 2020 so we installed it and then in may we, we were right out from mob moab it was that year the covid year where they closed it down and that whole week dude i was just like permagrant i was like dude this is a cheat code this is back back <laughs> down down left yeah. right ba ba swipe like this is come here mortal Kombat, man i'm telling you it was scorpion's right. uppercut i'm telling you man it was crazy the stability that i had and able to side hill stuff and just it would just because of I, I didn't max out the travel, I wasn't maxing out the droop. I was maintaining downward pressure. It was just, it was a massive difference. So um, now, if you had to p- tell me to pick one, I don't know. I mean, if you're talking bigger than stock, I think I'd rather have the tires to go regular wheeling. But if I want to go do hardcore stuff, you got to have both. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to say that one's busted because quality suspension off road matters a ton for yeah. flex for droop for how good the part is at holding up under those conditions but then just from a just a sheer tire size i mean tire size is the way other than portals tire size is the way you get more net ground clearance that is the yeah. only way to raise your differential off the ground and get net ground clearance from axle tubes and all that so they're both super important to me and based on how I was doing it, I would pick one over the other. But I would actually say myth, um, myth neutral, myth plausible. <laughs> I mean, sir. It, it's plausible. <laughs> I, I can see it in certain circumstances. I'm definitely not yeah. going to come out and say myth busted. No, no, I won't say no, no, no. And that's that's exactly Unless why I put do. this one in here, and this is why I, I buried it in the middle. Uh, I was trying to try to stump you up on this one. Uh, but no, uh, 100% myth plausible. Um, in the in the right circumstances, I feel that suspension matters more than tire size. I've seen, sure. especially so the the park local to me and and kind of local to you is Uari. That's where all the local Jeep clubs go. That's where everyone goes. That's the proving grounds. Um, and I see a lot of people who even on 40s or you know th- we'll call it 37s plus you know 38s and 40s struggling to get up the front side of Daniel when there is a long arm JK or JL on 37s that crawls right up it with open open, like has no problem getting up it whatsoever. Um, And so when you start looking at those things and you start realizing, okay, what do other than driver skill, what do people have that are making this up pretty easily? Uh, and the, sus- the suspension always is the difference. That's the difference between someone installing a six inch rough cover- rough country with no geometry, re- like geometry correction, um, or just having a, a solid long arm with having more travel, better travel, better rate of travel, or, you know, having coilovers. Uh, and I would include coilovers in the entire suspension package for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I, w- I want to say that's myth plausible. Um, I definitely do not want to say busted, but it's not 100 yeah, percent confirmed sure. either because I've seen some mm-hmm. I've seen some very well built suspensions not do great things too. Uh, yeah. And like you op- said, in with open to discussion. Op- <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Open to discussion. Yeah, we can absolutely. have that discussion. Uh, myth number five: uh, solid axle is always better than IFS off road. Uh, if I'm going to channel my inner <laughs> Eric Miller here, I'm going to say myth <laughs> upheld. Um, no, it, it's um, it, it does. I mean, some people will still say that solid axle is better in the rocks. Um, Shannon Campbell would tell you you're wrong. So would Lauren Healy. So would Jason Shear. So would a lot of guys <laughs> that are going out there and and yeah. and performing at the highest levels and winning at the highest levels in Ultra Four, um, and and even in in mine. I mean, those Broncos that I compete against, 
Um, and, and and no offense to Josh Atterbury and John Rance. Those Broncos are awesome, and, and they drive the living crap out of them. But they're not the same as what Lauren Brad and Bailey drive. They're just not the same Bronco. Right. But those are IFS. And it's a toss-up whether I'm going to beat them or they're going to beat me. And, you know, I would actually say in some of the stuff, their suspension is better than what I have. In the desert, I can't 100%. run with them. I did my damnedest. I, even at this last, um, I thought it was Lauren, but it was actually Vaughn driving it. I blew by Lauren in the rocks like he was standing still. Or I guess it was Vaughn. The minute we get into the desert, flip the script, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do, you know, yeah. I, they figured it out. Like the year before, you know, I think that that Jeep 4699 tops out at like 105, 110 in the desert. Um, that's fast. They it's can go faster. Fast. Mm-hmm. They can go faster. Um, it just gets that front end being solid axle makes the back end. I know that sounds weird. It makes the back end too squirrely at that kind of speed. And their front end makes it where it doesn't do that because they're technically, right. I guess they're kind of independent rear suspension. They're kind of are, they kind of aren't because they got coilovers in the back now too. It's kind of a hybrid setup. Um, so the reason you like solid axle in the rocks is obviously as I'm pushing up on one, I'm giving force traction to the other one. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and you don't do that in IFS. If you're pushing up on the right side, the left side doesn't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. The left side has no idea. But in solid axle, it's the exact opposite of that. So there is somewhat of an advantage in the rocks at speed. Generally, a solid axle is going to have more overall wheel travel, generally. Um, when you get into crazy race stuff like that, it's negligible. But in general, yeah, you're going to have more wheel travel. But the second you get on washboard stuff, desert stuff, all that, the they're, they're, they're both going to have places where they excel. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say... If we're going to say solid axle is just better than IFS in every single way, meth definitely busted. Yeah. IFS a thousand percent has its place. I know Jeep people aren't going to like that. I also know that well over half the people that listen to the show are Jeep people. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do own a few Jeeps uh, and I love them. And for slow speed wheeling, uh, I don't think I would have it any other way, especially on big rocks for the two reasons I mentioned force traction um, and overall wheel travel. Uh, but when we get fast, I'm not going to lie. There's sometimes I look, you know, when I, when I saw Vaughn blowing by me in the desert, it hammers on lap. Well, that was lap one, yeah. middle lap one, something like that. Um, I was, I was cursing my solid axle set up, <laughs> um, cause I was, yeah. I was making them horses run buddy. And I just couldn't, I just couldn't do it. He was soaking stuff up cause it had gotten so worn out and squared off from all the T1 trucks hitting that during the desert challenge that it just was not. I couldn't stay on top of it like I like I could had it not been, you know, when, in pre-run. Pre-run, yeah. I had 100 miles an hour out there. Uh, on race day, I could not get above 85, 90. Couldn't do it. Yeah. I just couldn't do it. The back end would do this. Rob's like, calm down. Hey, stop. We're going to die. And I just couldn't do it. I certainly tried. But the desert trucks had just gotten it so bad. Um, and then all that weather that just washed the bottoms out. We got deluged. We thought it was going to round the, the washboards off. It didn't. So I just couldn't do it, mm-hmm. but he could, he could, and Bailey and all those guys could, all the solid axle guys could. So, um, yeah, yeah, because they're they're ultra built on the IFS side, and forty six ninety nine is ultra built on the solid axle side. So they're they're pretty close to each other for what they, the potential. Um, mm-hmm. Now they got portals and all that too, but say what you will about that and J arm instead of AI, they got all kinds of stuff. Um, and, and but you know forty six ninety nine is pretty technologically evolved as well for what it is so you know and and sometimes i beat them and sometimes they beat me i mean we go back and forth so um yeah i wouldn't say i wouldn't say ifs is not better or solid axle is better so yeah i'd say myth busted on that one from the from that standpoint for sure yeah i think so as well um it it really depends on the type of offer that you were are looking at um but in generic terms with the blanket statement of ifs is just better or I'm sorry, Starlight Axle is better than IFS just overall. I I don't subscribe to the notion. Um, I've seen IFS do some pretty cool things. And quite honestly, if I could piss off a lot of people and make the LJ IFS, I probably would look at doing it. Um, there is a guy who runs a Bronco TTB on a, uh, like a Dana mm-hmm. 50 TTB on a LJ. I'll, um, I think he might actually work for Jen right now. Uh, and you want to talk about a cool <laughs> freaking LJ cool. that can bomb through the yeah. desert. 
Yeah. That's a really good like hybrid setup. I mean, it has its downfalls as well, um, but you can't look at that and tell me that out there, a little bit of independent actuation does not help. So yeah, I'm going to agree with you there. Myth five, busted. Busted. Uh, going on you to- more? You got a myth six? Yeah, I've got, I've got one more. I've got a little bonus one. Okay, all right. Um, all right let's hear it. Which we've already kind of answered, but we're going to go for it again. Uh, you, you have to have 40s to wheel the hard stuff. <laughs> I, myth busted. busted come on man <laughs> elon the, the elon bust that i got 38s and i could do everything i did on 37s if i wanted to so yeah absolutely. yeah and i'm not even that talented of a driver so if i can do it anybody can do it yeah that's totally a myth um well and then just I know 46 99 i get it yeah 46 99 proves that as well as as well as the entire 46 and 4500 class on at Vulture 4. Uh, yeah, because they're all 37. Um, you're looking yeah. at some of the hardest trails in the world, and you're limited to a 35 and 37 inch tall tire. Um, I mean, it's yeah, sucks. you definitely do not need 40s to run those things. <laughs> no, oh, it's it not sucks. fun. It's not made 40s. to be fun. I'd love to have 40s, um, but you can't. But, uh, but you don't need them. No, you don't need them to wheel no. that stuff. If you, and honestly, 100% honestly, if you in, in 4699, the way it is built right now with 35s, if you took race pace away from your day and I gave you a full solid day to run the hammers course, you would make it through everything, even on the 35s. It's the race pace and to? the speed that <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, like, it's, Dude, it's the race pace and the speed man. that kills you. Those trails, those trails are evil. <laughs> <laughs> those trails are evil, yeah. man. They are just. They're not, I have you kept those trails give people nightmares, including me. I, I I don't. I wouldn't want to. I would love thirty sevens. I mean, you give me, and that's and they're trying to do that in the forty six hundred class now is thirty sevens, and the class we're going to next year in Jeep Speed, I think is, I think it's thirty sevens also. Um, mm -hmm. So I I would love to do that, but I think anything over that would be. With that much horsepower, with that wheelbase, with the axles and the way that thing's built and the suspension and all that mess, I don't, I don't need anything more than thirty sevens. I wielded it at Moab on thirty eights and felt bulletproof. Um, yeah, we slapped a set of thirty sevens on there and did EJS in twenty three, I think, right after I mm -hmm. bought the car, because um, I needed the seat time. And uh, I mean, it, that thing was bulletproof. Like you can't, there was it was doing everything. <laughs> like it was, yeah. and it was walking everything. Oh yeah. Um, there was obstacles that that car would do that like only we'd have groups of 35, 40 Jeeps out there and only two or three of us were doing it. And it was usually myself. There's another V8 coil over swap long arm Jeep that Greensboro built that was doing all of that. And then there was the Hellcat, the, the Hellcat from Josh and Charlotte um, mm -hmm. until he until his power actually became a hindrance and broke some stuff because it was too powerful. Yeah. Um, he's since fixed that and beefed up all the things. Um, but oh, yeah. th there was a lot of times that those three Jeeps were the only thing those were the only Jeeps making stuff mm -hmm. where, you know, long arm coil over long arm, big horsepower, you know, that kind of stuff. So, and that was 38. So you give me 37s and I can race on 37s, Whew. but I don't need 40s. Nah. And I don't need 40s on, if I ever did 40s on the four by you, it would be just because I feel like it. Not because I need, right. I don't need it. I've wheeled it on 38s. I'll continue to wheel on 38s. 40s would look cool, but I kind of think it looks good on 38s too. I love the tire. I love oh. it. Perfect on 38s. Yeah, I think it's great. And honestly, from a visual standpoint, there aren't very many people that are going to look that, that look at that thing from a side profile or being too far away to see the tire size and say, oh, you're on 38s, not 40s. Oh, for sure. No, you're going to see that. I get that all the you time. You said it's a big-ass Nitto tire. Yeah. 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 yeah, I get it all the time. Yeah. 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 Yep. And the the two inches visually is not going to make that that no. much of a difference. So it's, it's a one-inch net gain. I mean, you know, yeah. on ground, mm -hmm. which, which is, I'd like that on ground clearance for sure. And, and I'm not saying I wouldn't do that. But my days of just doing stupid trails to do stupid trails are over. I have no desire. I want to get out. I, I like to enjoy it. I'm too old for that crap. Mm -hmm. I get. I do my stupidity in a race car. I don't need to do my stupidity oh, yeah. in my personal wheel and rig. Not anymore. Right. And, and my final point to this, and just to say it's absolutely busted, is if a group of flat fender wheelies can go take on the Rubicon on 32-inch tall tires, what's yeah. your excuse? Might take them a little bit longer, longer, but they'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> it take a lot longer. I mean, Rubicon gets yeah. hard at times of the year. I mean, it really only gets hard right before Jeep Jamboree. But other than that, especially like right now, if you're going out there, it's not. It's a it's a different trail. It's a much easier trail than mm -hmm. it would have been five or six weeks ago, whenever it was before Jeep Jamboree. So, and it'll get progressively harder again. 
um, until they come in there next July and clean it out again. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, you don't. I mean, you don't have to have forties. Nah, no, myth busted. no, absolutely myth busted there. So I think that's going to conclude that portion of this, um, guys. If you like this stuff, if you like talking about the things that we're talking about and and busting these myths and and talking about a little more opinionated things. Drop a comment below because uh, we would love to to do some more, more of this. Myths, I've got myths. I've got so many of these um, that we can talk about, and uh, I like it. It's a good discussion. But speaking of like real versus fake things, um, I also saw something today, Doug, that really kind of it aggravated me enough that I wanted to do make this a subject, even if we talk about this quickly. Um, real versus I just, fake. I just I just, I just want to condemn right here on record. <laughs> Uh-oh. Paid for fake product reviews with products that are not actually that good. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to name. That. I don't want to name brands here. Yeah. But but it yeah. it is multi brand and it is multi product. It's not limited to one group of products. I've seen it with many things. People that are only giving good reviews on these because either they're paid for or they were given. Um, and without actual real world experience, as in like they just installed it and it's the best thing since sliced bread only because they got paid for it. Or they push that product on Facebook groups without any real experience only because that was a free product or paid for. I hate it. I just want to go ahead and I wish we could put a stop to those. Um, I wish we could. I'm not a, um, I'm not a fan of that at all. I don't know how you stop it. I think, I think there's a line to be drawn between... And at some point, the people listening, like you got to be an adult and understand mm-hmm. that that's what this is. Like, you know, I'm I'm tired of seeing these idiots on Facebook posting these obvious scam pages and going, "Hey, is this mm-hmm. a reliable source for parts?" And like, come on, man, no, be an adult. Like, be an adult. You, you know better. You, use your noggin. And and I kind of <laughs> I, I lump in this the same way. Like, you know, somebody's buying. Uh, some crazy off-brand named product from obviously from China, and they're you know they got it from Amazon or somebody gave it to them, and you know they post on here, oh this is great, this is wonderful, we like it. And it's good. Um, you gotta know, you gotta understand that. Like some of the responsibility has to lie with the consumer here, because mm-hmm. if it didn't work, these companies wouldn't do it. Oh, hundred so, percent. I, I don't like that people do it, but I'm also like, okay, if you don't have the money, I mean, Jeep parts ain't cheap and they're getting free stuff. You got to think that that's going to happen. It's going to be a thing. It's part of it. It ain't just in Jeep world. It's everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's in the drift world. It's in motocross. It's in mountain bikes. It's in, it's everywhere. It's in aftermarket car, you know, all that stuff, monster trucks, everything. So no matter where you go, it's going to be there. Um, so yeah, I think the consumer has got to be a little bit to blame here. Because, again, the companies wouldn't do it if it didn't work. But, yeah, it is pretty stupid, and I make fun. You know, I just – I've gotten to the point now where I see these people do it. I just kind of roll my eyes because I'm like, yeah, you're an idiot. Because yeah. I know I can't stop it. I mean, I, it's not going to stop. Um, sometimes if it's just egregious, I'll make a post going like, you know. And I'll kind of usually like – I'll just allude to it on a post. But like, anybody who says blank, you shouldn't listen to them. And I'll just make yeah. it real, you know. And then if they come at me, then fine, I can back it up. But – um, but there's that. And then there's like legitimate sponsorship stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, no, that's and I say totally that having, different. I have legitimate sponsorships on 4699. People pay me to go race. That's a thing. I, I don't hide that. Um, now I do two things. I make sure that everybody knows that the race program is separate from the shops. Just because mm-hmm. I run your part on the race car does not mean we are now going to push your product exclusively in the shops. In fact, quite the opposite. I tell them, I say, look, I like your product. I'll run your product. We can make a deal on the race team, but I'm not going to go down and tell all the salespeople to only sell your product because then they're going to sell something to a customer that your product, while great, may not be the best fit for them. Um, Now, will I prefer your product because of the great quality and the great customer service? Sure, absolutely. But I don't want to force it on somebody that it doesn't work for, right? I'm I'm just not going to do that. So, yeah, I mean, we've got tire sponsors. We've got wheels. We've got suspension. We've got... body armor, all that kind of stuff. So number one, separate from the shops. Number two, I pick sponsors. Mm -hmm. I tell people no. (laughs) There are people who have come to us, and I will say no. There is not a single sponsor on that car that is not at the top levels in the industry of their segment. 
There ain't a mm-hmm. single one of them out there that is not top of the line stuff and was handpicked by me. Like, right. Different tire companies will sponsor you. Like, that's not that hard. You can get together a pretty decent marketing deck. You can go out there and you can go get a tire sponsor. You can put together a decent marketing deck and you can go get a wheel sponsor. You can go get a suspension sponsor. There's people that want their stuff in race cars. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. It, it's not that hard. So we, understanding that, will go pick. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I am lucky, fortunate enough where I'm able to do that at and our program um, and we'll continue to do that. And there's not a single product or v- company on that vehicle that is not top notch, top of the line stuff that I would be have any qualms whatsoever about recommending to somebody based off the product, the manufacturing, the longevity, reliability, customer service, whatever, what have you in any of those mm-hmm. facets. Um, so that that's one thing. But I'm also not going out here gushing over that, even though I could certainly right. be justified in doing that because I'm legit sponsored by these people. But I'll also tell you, and I've said this before, beware of these people that are getting so-called free product. It ain't always free. You'd be surprised what people would do for a 10, 15% yeah, discount. Absolutely. <laughs> I had a company. Oh, yeah. I think I might have told this story before. I had an owner of a well-known suspension company, and he goes on Facebook all the time, and he'll tag himself, and he'll, put, he'll drop links, and I go, dude, what are you doing? He goes, man... I'm not giving away what you think I'm giving away. He said, you'd be surprised what people would do for a 10% discount code. And I'm like, you smart son of a... <laughs> but he's right. He was 100% yeah, right. No, 100% and he, does, right. he continues to do it to this day. It works. And honestly, it's one of the only ways he gets marketed because he doesn't do a ton of marketing. And it works. And he's kind of built this outside sales force doing that, even though sometimes that's the only way he gets a sale. So I'm like, I mean, you either pay to market or you just give somebody a discount of less than you would have paid to do the marketing in their area, and now you've mm-hmm. got a targeted marketing rep in their area. Does that always work out for the company? No. Sometimes these people get the discount and they piss off and you never hear from them again. But the times that it does work, it can be kind of profitable. One person can sell you five, six, seven, eight kits at retail or even close to retail. You've made your money back because you're crazy if you think that some of these companies don't build in discount into their price structure. Oh, absolutely. You know it. It's the ones that are always 10% off or always mm-hmm. 5% off. They build that into their pricing model, and that's fine. I have no problem with that. Oh, 100%. We sell some of those companies, too. Yeah, I have no problem with that. Just know that that's what it is. So, um, yeah, just understand the difference between spo- actual sponsorship and then, like, these some of these brand ambassadors or, you know, I get messages all the stupid time from Chinese companies mm-hmm. wanting to throw me stuff for free if I'll give them a positive review. And they're not yeah, even no. trying to hide it. Like, we'll give it to you if you give us a positive review. No. I haven't even had your <laughs> stuff yet. I, don't even, yeah. I haven't even seen product one from you. And you already want me to agree. And some of these guys sign contracts to get free stuff where they're not allowed to say bad things. That's so those either, are the ones that I'm say nice. I'm talking or you don't about say anything. Yeah, yeah exactly. They're everywhere. Those are the ones that I'm talking about. Yeah. And obviously, it's a little bit different with you in the race car. You actually test this stuff out, and oh yeah, you're not shy about if the if the product breaks or fails, that sponsor is not going to be on the car the following well, year. Well, we show it. We and show we it. If we break, we do we've broken it. wheels. Yeah, we've broken were, several. Some things. of them were my fault, <laughs> but. <laughs> but yeah. Credit to Raceline when we talked to Raceline um, after we uh, it was Dirty Life before I got it. Nothing wrong with Dirty Life. I just had a relationship with Raceline. We broke. I've broken one wheel. I just absolutely shattered one wheel. But Raceline was like, "Look, we know something could happen, but we want you to. We don't. I don't run forged wheels from Raceline. I don't run mm-hmm. those. That's a thousand dollar wheel. Most people aren't going to buy those. They want you to run the cast wheels. Credit to them. Mm-hmm. They want you to because they want to know what the limit is." They want to know, hey, if it breaks, what broke it? What happened? Right. You know, some of these companies want the stuff that I destroyed back. Next Venture Motorsports, one of them. If I damage something, they want it back. You know, they want to do R and D on it. They were at the tent mm-hmm. at Hammers looking at stuff. There was some redesign stuff going on on the rear bumper that you, as the customer, get now because of what they found that we did on forty six ninety nine. Right. That's R and D, people, and that, that came is from R&D. that sponsorship. And that is the difference yeah, between that came from the sponsorship. Yeah, and that's the difference between that and then signing a piece of paper that says you won't say anything bad about a shitty product. Yep. All right, but Which because of that, do. yeah, uh, but because of that, I kind of want to do a little lightning round of, I guess, top three in a couple different categories of reputable, reliable, proven um, parts and like parts and companies um, that we have experience with off road in race conditions. They hold Is up this great. And Caleb's top threes. Yeah, top three. All this right. is our, yeah, this is our top three. But I'm going to make kind of a lightning <laughs> round. Uh, so, top three well, suspension disclaimer, companies. Let me say this. 
Yep. I I am saying this from personal opinion. <laughs> this has nothing to do. This is this is the, the opinions expressed here are mine and solely mine and not the expressed opinion of Outlaw Offer or whatever exactly. that disclaimer goes. <laughs> this has nothing to do with preferences of Outlaw Offer. This is my personal. I know for me, I have to say that because people will lump in what I say to the official position of Outlaw Offroad. This is not the official position of Outlaw Offroad. Right. This is me, myself, and I, and maybe a little bit of the racing. Right. Absolutely. All right. Let's do it. Lightning round. What do you got? All right. First, uh, top three suspension. Mm. Uh, well, I guess we'll we say suspension like, steering. I mean, we'll kind of lump it all in together. Okay. Um, rock crawler suspension. Mm-hmm. Obviously, and I say that from an, having just an intimate knowledge and being involved in their R and D, like I, I have no company that I'm more intimately involved with, in and in knowing what their manufacturing is, their R and D, and then actually taking part in in some of that. So, rock crawler suspension, um, number two, uh, BDS suspension. Mm-hmm. Um, that's more of an over overall. Um, so that would be like a sport truck Fox thing. If we're talking Jeep, mm-hmm. the JKS is their more Jeep side. The BDS is more their truck side. Uh, and then zone off road, but I'm not going to throw that in the top three because that's their budget. But that BDS yeah. JKS manufacturing thing for the combination of truck and truck and Jeep would be my number two. Um, I'm also pretty familiar with what those guys do to R and D their stuff. Um, I know personally, one of the guys that does a lot of their, they do a lot of real world R and D. So, uh, yeah, JKS Manufacturing, BDS, of course, that's all under the Fox umbrella. That's the, you know, Fox mm-hmm. owns those companies there. So that would be my number. That would be my number two. And that kind of gets into truck, a truck as well. Um, and then my number three would be um, probably Icon Vehicle Dynamics. Um, and, again, that's more truck and Toyota stuff. They do some Jeep stuff, and it's not bad. It's, it's actually pretty good. It's just a little more on the firm side. Um mm-hmm. But with with being so in with Rock Crawler and then JKS on the Jeep stuff, we gotta get we gotta show some love to the truck people and the Toyota people and all that. Uh, aside from some of the boutique brands that do Toyota Overland stuff, Icon is not a boutique brand. They are a they are a major player. Um, mm-hmm. I would say Icon up there uh, for that. And there's there's tons of good brands out there, right? I could give honorable mentions to a bunch of different brands. But if you're only gonna give me three, I'm gonna kind of spread the love around um, everybody because you know. There's certain vehicles that Rock Crawler doesn't do. There's certain yep. vehicles that BDS is not that great at. So, and I think I do that specifically because when you get these big conglomerate companies that just do everything, they're not that great because you can't be awesome at everything, right? You yeah. know, Rough Country is Rough Country for a reason. They have a kit for every freaking thing, but yeah. they're not outstanding at anything. Right. Um, they're pretty good at customer service, but they're not outstanding yeah. at anything. They're just okay. Um, so that's where that's my mentality on that. Yeah, um, this is where my opinion differs a little bit just because I don't have experience with Toyotas or Jeep, a lot yeah. of things outside of Jeeps. I'm, I'm a Jeep dude through and through. Uh, so my top three are going to be Rock Crawler, again, because I have more knowledge and, and experience with Rock Crawler than anything else. Um, but Rock Crawler, uh, I'm going to go with Evo, uh, Evo Manufacturing, and then uh, RPM Steering and Suspension. Stuff. I don't know yeah. enough about RPM. I love his steering stuff, um, and we sell a lot of it. You know, Rock Outlaw sells a lot of it. I'm not sure. Initially, I had some concerns about some of the geometry stuff that he was doing on the suspension end. Um, some, you know, some some roll center stuff. Some that just some just some technical physics type stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I think maybe that's fixed now. I I don't know I enough. Wanna- I, I would know. say it's fixed um, just because I've seen enough people who are using their rigs to as much of a capacity as they can with Don suspension under it. And they're doing pretty well. I, I would not overlook them by any means as a contender in the suspension field. I think uh, for moving me, it's forward, definitely not a negative. Yeah. I just need, I need that to be out for longer. I think. Yeah, no, for I sure. I get that for sure. A longer. Uh, next one, lighting companies, top three hit me. Uh, Baja Designs, Rigid, Diodynamics. That's pretty easy. Yeah, 100%. I agree there. <laughs> I, I, you know, um, Diodynamics, one of the last companies, is making most everything they do in the United States. Yep. Um, there's something to be said for that. JW Speaker's yeah. another one, but they're more on the OE side. So, mm-hmm. yeah, Baja Designs, Rigid Industries, Diodynamics. 
Yeah, I agree with that in that that order as well. Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, ba Baja Designs and Rigid are kind of interchangeable. The reason Baja gets a nod for me is because they're a little more unique on the design front. Mm -hmm. And you look at a light, you know it's Baja Design, right? Like, you know oh, that. Yeah, so for sure. I get people like KC Lights. I get that. Nacho, Nacho Off-Road, another good lighting company. But if you're going to make me do a top three, yeah. Yep, Baja I'm forcing Rigid, you to a top uh, three. Dynamics. Yep. Top three wheels. Hit me. Uh... Raceline, Raceline is my number one. Um, Method would be probably my number two, and then KMC. Um, okay. I know fuel is probably number one from a popularity standpoint, and mm -hmm. I say that running fuel wheels on a, on my truck. Um, I love fuel, so thousands and thousands and thousands of set. But if you're going to ask me what I want to put on a vehicle, I've got. Um, for off-roading purposes, now if we're talking on-road, like you know, for show, I might I'm gonna have a different top three. Oh yeah. But for off-road, yeah, it's Raceline, Method, and KMC. Okay. I, I think I would do um, Method, KMC, and we'll go Dirty Life. I I, I really okay. like their stuff. Dirty Life is on a lot of race cars. Um, they're they they take a pretty good beating. Um, so do I mean? And honestly, when I think of those three, I think those are the the top ones that are on race cars as well. I think so, uh, and yeah. most represented throughout Ultra Four. Dirty Life Baja. got on my bad side yeah. years ago when they had a bad batch of bolts. <laughs> they had it was like a bad batch of bolts or a bad batch yeah. of inserts in the wheel and their mm -hmm. bead locks. And They're I just got because we were selling a bunch of them at the time, and we just got like it was problem after problem. And I was like, man, screw this! And I got mad. I was like, man, this is crap. And they, to the, they did fix. They fixed it quick. It was a one single batch thing, um, mm -hmm. but when we when that happened, we started selling other brands, and it just never changed. So yeah. they've definitely fixed it. And there is a ton of race cars running Dirty Life without issue. Like yep. Dirty Life was on forty six ninety nine, and we're doing fine. I think it was Vision had been on there at one point with a forged wheel. That's mm -hmm. and then, that's a very important distinction to make. And then before that, it was Dirty Life for its first two seasons, I think, and then it was. And then it was Vision. And I'm pretty sure Dirty Life is what's on 4655 on Sergio's yeah. car. I'm yep. pretty sure I it's would, Dirty Life. I would say so. Because I know Rockcrawler has a has a deal with them. So, yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with that brand at all. Nope. Not these days. No. Uh -uh. All right. Top three tire companies. Mickey Thompson, Nitto, Falcon. Okay. Yeah, I was going to go Mickey, Nitto, Toyo. But, yeah, I like the idea of, of Falcon being in that mix, too. Yeah, but you can't say Toyo because Nitto and Toyo are basically the same thing. They just you sniper right. yeah, they, different yeah, markets. Yeah, no, you are right. Toyo you goes right after there. truck mostly. Nitto goes after off-road mostly. And yeah. that, that UHP stuff, the drift and all that kind of stuff, which that's not us, but that's what Nitto. Nitto's, they, they've even called themselves snipers. You know, they, they're, they are market snipers. They go after certain markets, and they do it well. And then Toyo kind of owns that. But I'll, I'll give you that since we're not just, no, a, Jeep, no, we're like not just a Jeep show. Yeah. We're, we're all and and my and my thing with Falcon too is because again, like I said with Rockcrawler, I've been to Falcon Tire, I've been to their driving school, I've been to their their the Falcon Tire University. I've learned about a lot of that stuff from them. Um, I've wheeled with a lot of those guys. I've done that stuff on their tires. My wife's um, lifted expedition. Um, I know people are like, "What lifted expedition?" Yeah, it looks actually pretty cool. Um, that runs Falcons, the new Wild Peak AT4. It's a great tire. It's one of the quietest, if not the quietest, AT I've ever come across, ever, in nice. anything. Now, when you get into their mud terrain, we can have that discussion. Um, but it's still a great mud terrain. It's still very quiet. Yeah. Now, as it is capable off-road, it's a it's very, 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 very good on-road. But it's still in my top three. So, Mickey Thompson, Nitto, Falcon. Awesome. And last but not least, top three accessory brands. Accessory brands? Like that's just not lift wheels, tires type stuff. Yeah, your typical what do you accessory. Um, oh like yeah, body armor be... or like recovery and lighting. Um, well, we've already got lighting hit. I'll call it. Fair. Um, we'll call it like switch stuff. I don't really want to go into body armor because there are so many of those. Um, yeah, yeah we'll I'm call kidding. it. We'll call it like um, interior accessories, add-ons, not body armor, switches, um, stuff like that. Uh, American Adventure Lab. I know yes, they do would, some kind of armory stuff, but they do a ton of accessory stuff. Mm -hmm. um, small company based out of Utah. Um, 
the gripe on them is lead time, but people, they're a small company and they're all doing it. They're doing most of that in-house. And I know that Brit is out there actually striving to do even more and more and more and more in-house so that he drops those lead times. So American Adventure Labs would definitely be one. Um, from an electrical standpoint, um, I could see going another way, but S-Pod, just so you can mm -hmm. have your electrical stuff covered with your lighting um, and all that kind of stuff. And then, and I guess I'm trying to do something that's more from a mounting stuff standpoint, that's tough because of so many accessories. Uh, I'd go factor 55. Um, I would absolutely put have them the in that category. Stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to have that. I mean, it's something you got to have. And if you're going to, if you're going to do recovery equipment, you do factor 55, like, you know, yeah, it's like, it's like what you do with worn. If you want a winch buy anything, if you need a winch buy worn, yeah. if you want recovery gear for looks, buy crap off Amazon, do whatever you want to buy. But if you need yeah. recovery gear, you buy factor 55. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I would say uh, I'm going to differ it up a little bit. Go Switch Pros, PRP, and Factor 55. Um, but I, yeah, do I can't go feel like PRP. all those they are. They make some other stuff too, yeah. I use their straps, stuff. yeah. It's their straps yeah. that hold the race car in. It's their straps that hold all the stuff in there. It's their seats. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I can get with PRP 100%. I've got a set of four or five point. It's been so long. I don't remember how long since I've ordered this, but four or five Jeez. point harnesses ready to go in the LJ <laughs> when the LJ is yeah, done. Yeah, I've, I've even got their um, window nets in the race car. Yeah. So yeah, I can't complain. Yeah. Can't complain about that. Yeah, I would say PRP are definitely more of an accessory, but yeah. So yeah, all of those companies are solid companies that we trust in, that we use, that we have experience sure. with. Um, those are not paid. Those are not bought nope. for or sponsors of this YouTube channel or mm -hmm. the, the podcast in general. We do not have sponsors. Uh, we are just presented by Outlaw Off-Road. Uh, most so, of them weren't associated with the race team either. Exactly. So take that for what it is. Those are some really good brands that you can count on and rely on without having mm -hmm. a, uh, a fake review. Um, and moving forward after that, I do have a couple mailbag questions for you. Uh, All I'm right. Let's wrap it up with the mailbag. So let's wrap it up. With Elbet, I would, yeah, with Melbet. Let's do it. Um, this one came the from the Wrangler LJ owners, um, because of course I'm part of that Facebook group. Uh, is hydro assist really needed? Um, not until you are putting big tires in rocks. Big 100%. tires in rocks, yes, it's needed, and I can tell and you or lockers yeah. and or front lockers because engage a front locker and then try to turn. It sucks. Yep. It's going to be hard. So, yeah, big tires on rocks, um, you know, tires against anything, really. And then lot front, having a front locker where you're actually going to use the front locker. Yeah, I would say, you know, hydro is needed. Um, uh, you know, I could get into where you could get away without having it, but I think the sample answer here is if you go big tires and you go off-road, um, I'm assuming you have lockers, and then, yes, you need hydro. Yeah. Yep, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, number two, this one's kind of funny. I think you're going to get a kick out of this one. <laughs> um, this one was a pretty long post from Wrangler Jeep Wrangler JL Group. Um, I'm going to preface this with this guy made multiple posts asking for the same thing and got kind of frustrated. Um, but he said, I have no like cable for my aux battery. Yeah, no, he posted multiple okay. times in the same group. Wait, and he posted this same question multiple times, same group. Across two days. Um, this this man has been very flustered. Tell me you're so a male Karen to... without telling me you're a male Karen. <laughs> yeah, he said, I have no cable from my aux battery to my main battery. Posts have said that it's under the front seat or by my gas tank in the rear. I have neither. So I went to the Jeep dealer. They said it's under my fuse box. They came out to show me. I took their word for it. The next morning, I put a probe through the, aux, through the battery case. There is no battery. What am I missing? Where's the aux battery? Um... Now, I want to preface this way. He took a picture of the engine bay. There was no alternator either. So he's e-torque. He's e-torque. <laughs> so he doesn't have an aux battery. Correct. I mean, my until you said that, my answer was going to be, A, either somebody did you a favor and deleted that thing before you bought it, because that mm -hmm. would be doing you a favor, um, or you just put the probe in the wrong spot. Um, yeah. Because if you're supposed to have an aux battery and you still have it's going to be there in the little box below. The fuse, you know, fuse box, main battery, and then aux battery. And aux battery is really, really small. Um, yeah. So, yeah, if he does, I mean, he's e-torque. I mean, e-torques don't have aux batteries. Now, they still have the same holder. Mm -hmm. It's just empty because Jeep's not going to make 16 different pieces. They're going to put the same thing that holds the battery. There's just right. not going to be anything in there because nothing takes up that space in the e-torque. The whole e-torque setup is underneath rear driver. 
the rear drive shaft. Yeah, yep. rear opposite driver. of the um, gas tank. So yeah, he's got e torque, um, mm -hmm. and his post was useless because I don't know why he was even looking for it. Like, you're not gonna have an aux battery problem because you don't have an aux battery. Why are you freaking looking for the thing? Because he wanted to Weird. kill auto start stop. That's not even the way you do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, I figured you'd get a kick out of that one. Um, that one kind of left. I mean, me there is a way. There is a way to bypass, and there's YouTube videos on this. There is a way to run the cable back up and connect it and bypass the aux battery. That's a mm -hmm. thing. Um, but if the cable's not there, that's your first indicator you don't have an aux battery because there's no cable. And then you said he posted a picture, and it was obviously um, e torque. I'm wondering if he didn't look. I mean, did he? He said he looked. He said somebody told him it was. He said somebody told him it could be on the bottom. Did he not freaking go look? See, this is why I hate Facebook yeah. groups. <laughs> yeah, either either he didn't crawl underneath to and, and check the driver's side, or uh, he was just so bent on maybe thinking that he did not have an e work model um, that he didn't realize that he actually does. Um, so I would implore him to uh, check out I mean, out based the on your sticker. information, he clearly has e -torque. Yeah, there's there's no Clearly. way around it. Jeep didn't make yeah. a, another version of the Wrangler with without e torque and no auxiliary battery. It just doesn't yeah. exist. So. Still, right now to this day. Yeah. Yeah. So check out underneath the Jeep. Look at your uh, look at your spare battery under there because it's probably one. Or there. Uh, just get a Taser or get a freaking Super Chip or get some programmer because if you're going to do bigger tires and gears, you're going to need it anyway. And then just mm -hmm. start stop. Just delete like, it. Just delete it. You, yeah. Just turn it. It off. works. <laughs> it's not that hard people or worst hard. case comes to worst case you hit the dang button when you get in the jeep well you could do that yeah. sensor that hood open sensor too but it turns the light on yeah. the dash it turns not that i give a crap yeah. about dash lights obviously but you know some people do so i can get why they wouldn't want to do that but there's multiple ways to do it depending on what if anything you want to spend and you clearly are not going to do it that way because you have e-torque so sorry and you're not yeah. disconnecting that so yeah sorry that's not uh, coming out buddy and Last but not least, and this is one that I've seen a ton of times across multiple groups, um, and it did come up again today, so I figured I'd throw this one in there. Um, are sector shaft braces worth it, and which brand are the best? Uh, brand is, you know, whatever. I've used the Steer Smarts and the Synergy, um, and they're both mm -hmm. fine. Um, some of them are, the sector shaft is more than just you know, there was a problem with the JLs in like what eighteen and nineteen, where they were having some track bar weld bracket, some frame side track bar mount brackets were coming off, um, mm -hmm. and that was a robot weld thing. And and they fixed that now; it's not an issue anymore. Um, but in combination with that, Jeep thought they were going to be a bunch of geniuses and put an aluminum steering box in the JL in like eighteen, nineteen, and I think into twenty. Um, so you're right and you there. can look at the you can know this by if your box is silver. If your box is silver, you have an aluminum steering box. Uh, I think with the AE variant, I think with AE, and when I say AE, it's the last two numbers or digits of your part number in the white sticker with the barcode on the side of your box. Um, generally, I think Mopar numbers are eight numbers and two digit two eight numbers, two letters. Yeah, I think that's we'll right. See you right there. So the first one was numbers, 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 AA. And they're like, mm, that's not good. AB, AC, AD. I think we're up to like, I don't know, A double F by now. Um, but I think AE was like the first one that was like legit. Um, Good. and I may be wrong on that, but I think it was AE. Now, most of, you know, now if you get a black one, that's the steel box. If you get the silver one, mm -hmm. that's an aluminum box. I think they phased out the aluminum ones altogether. Um, like all the Mojave's from, from the word go, we're getting steel ones, all that stuff. So mm -hmm. if you have an earlier JL, um, would that help? Yes. Yeah, I could see that. Um, I think the first thing you need to do if you have an aluminum box is get rid of it. Um, either put in a, a, a PSC box or go with an OE box that's the steel box, something like that. That was why that sector shaft brace was there. They were getting flex from the, from the steering box. If you put in the right steering box, you now have eliminated that steering box flex, therefore eliminating the need for the sector shaft brace. That was a part that was born from the combination of the track bar issue, the track bar mount issue, and the aluminum steering box. That is not a thing anymore, so mm -hmm. it is not something. I have not installed one of those on a non-older than 2020 JL in years. Mm -hmm. It's been a couple of years. Um, now, there's been one or two customers who have come in and just said, I want it, and I'm not going to argue with them. Fine, you want to spend your money, fine, whatever. 
Right. Um, and we'll do that. But as far as what would need it, uh, if you have an 18 or a 19 JL, take a look. Yeah. Take a look and see if you have a silver box or a black box, and then take a look at your welds. If your welds look like they're crap, you know, I liked the Steer Smarts one that came out. I think Rusty's came out with one at some point. The mm-hmm. other ones I have really good experience with and knowledge of is um, is Steer Smarts because I think the Steer Smarts one is still to this day, the track bar brace is still on Reaper to this day because it was an 18. Um, and we put that brace on there. At one point, it did have the sector shaft brace, but then it changed the PSC and it didn't need the sector shaft brace. So we removed the sector shaft brace piece and left the track bar bracket piece on there to stiffen up that track bar mount. And, and that's been a good thing for, for Reaper for years. It's still, like I said, it's still there. And I think last time I saw Ryan was hucking it in North Georgia. So it's still <laughs> doing, it's still doing fine. So yeah, no, um, it's still doing yeah. Fine. If you have an 18 or 19 JL, check it. Other than that, I mean, if you want it, get it. If not, it's not a, it's not a need. No, nah, I wouldn't think so. All right. Well, that's all I got for you today. Doug. Sweet. We're done. Woo. We had some good sections. <laughs> there. That was good. <laughs> yeah. Could it have been the best show ever? Could, could, could mm, we'll see. It possibly could have been. It could have been. Anyway, we've already taken up enough of you wonderful people's time today or tonight, uh, whenever you're listening. So we will wrap up by saying thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, wherever you're finding us, whether that's on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, I think we are still working. Caleb, if I'm wrong, we are working on getting on iHeartRadio as well. I think that's a thing yep. that we're working on. That's okay. in progress. Awesome. Mm-hmm. You'll know. We'll we'll keep you up to date, and we'll put the little when we get that up. We will put the little logo across the bottom here, you know, mm-hmm. over over there, over there. We'll add it right there uh, when we're up on iHeartRadio. Just another platform that we can be up on for you guys to be uh, to bring the show to more people. So, again, thank you guys for being here. Don't forget if you're watching us on YouTube, hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when the new episode drop. That does help the channel out. Uh, I know we get a lot more listens than we do views, and I'd like to change that. I'd like to get more more views but maybe people just don't like looking at us they'd rather hear us which is fine i'm not gonna i'm not gonna you know discriminate you guys want to listen you guys want to watch whatever you want to do so yeah thank you for that don't forget leave the comments get in the comments and let us know more myths maybe you got more off-road myths maybe you got more top threes you want to hear about uh maybe you got a mailbag question you want to be on the mailbag um stuff like that you want to do more uh real versus fake you want to tell me where i was wrong on something that's fine we'll do more where doug was right where doug was wrong because Lord knows love, love it. there's times there's times when I was wrong as I admitted today. So that is how we will wrap it up there, guys. Thank you again. I uh, can't wait to do this for you guys again next week. But until then, you guys have a great week. Have a great weekend, whatever it is, wherever you may be. And we will see you next time. You've been listening to the dirt to dust presented by outlaw off road. The premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, to see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.